Hey guys, here's the next video, and now we are going to talk about hooking up motors and configuring your drives. So what I'll do, I'm going to cover a few things here on this video, and then I will put a few still shots at the end of it as uh, a point of reference. So let's get started. Fire up the, fire up the box. And what we have here, we have the, the motors fed in here through these, uh, I don't know what you call these, these compression type fittings for cables. Both the motors are powered up. So if we look under the hood, so here's the connections. So all I've done is I've connected the uh, 36 volt power supply to uh, each of the drives and I fished the uh, motor cable and encoder cable through the enclosure and naturally I have these plugged in. So let me, um, I guess I'll give you a couple of disclaimers. First of all, never, ever, 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 ever power up these drives unless the motor cable is plugged into it. If you power up these drives without the motor connected, I am pretty sure you're going to damage it. Second thing, never, ever, ever, ever flip the dip switches on one of these drives while the power is turned on. I am also fairly certain that that will damage the drive. So those are a couple of precautions. The labeling where you power up the uh, drive from the power supply is labeled AC, AC. There doesn't seem to be any polarity. Uh, on mine, I have the negative voltage on the left and the positive voltage on the right. The, uh, so as a point of reference here, the, the blue one is positive, the black one is negative, but it doesn't, the drive doesn't seem to care because there's no polarity. Um, okay, so first things first, you gotta fish these cables through, right? So that means you're gonna have to take the ends off I will put some pictures here at the end of this video that show you all the the way the colors are supposed to go on the connector. I don't know, maybe you can maybe you can decipher that just from watching this part of the video, but I'll put some still shots at the end. So, no big deal there. You just fish them through and reconnect the uh, connectors. Um, before you power them up, it's good Right, you want to maybe flip your dip switches because, and I don't know if I can get a video of this. You have all of your uh, drive settings, so you want to pick the uh, settings that work for you. And I believe for my application here, I'm going to have my x axis set to 800 steps per revolution and my z axis set to 2000 steps per revolution. But you can set that to whatever you want. And I, like I said, do that. Flip all those dip switches before you power it up. Um, all right, when you get to the point where you do power them up, you'll notice you know, your drives should lock up, you know, should hold position. Matter of fact, let's just turn it on. Here, I'll show you what this should look like. Pay attention to the LED lights. Okay, here we go. Watch the LED lights. That's what it's supposed to look like when you power it on. If you run into a situation where you power it on and the lights blank or something just doesn't seem quite right, you know, if you check your motor shaft and one, you know, a motor shaft isn't locked up like it spins freely, even though it's powered on, shut it off immediately and check all your wiring because you probably you probably connected something wrong. And even these encoder wires, if you, like for instance, if you, if you uh, rearrange them and don't wire them up correctly, the drive will sense that something's wrong and it, it'll, I guess what it's trying to do is protect itself. It just, it won't power up the motors. So anyway, pay really close attention to your wires when you're putting them back in these connectors. All right, the next thing, and this is kind of an optional step, but I'll go over it. So these drives are pretty
pretty cool. They have a, uh, you can see they have an alarm circuit, right? Alarm plus, alarm minus. So you can use that with your centroid acorn. You can basically have the, the acorn monitor the status of those drives. And if something makes the drives freak out and trigger an alarm, the acorn will read it as an alarm and it will stop your machine. I really recommend doing that. Um, if you don't use the alarm circuit and for some reason one of your drives stops working, your uh, Centroid CNC software won't know that. So let's say for instance, your, your Z axis, right? You're boring something. You're down inside of a part and you're boring. Let's just say the Z axis stops working for a few seconds. Well, the CNC software may, it's, thinks that you just retracted out of the hole, but physically you did not. And now let's say it's time to make that X clearance move to take the tool home. Well, your, your boring bar is still down inside your part. Now you're gonna to try to wrap it on X. You're gonna wreck your machine up and you're gonna break stuff and that's not cool. So really a good idea to lose, use your alarm circuit. The alarm circuit, the best way to connect it up is a normally closed uh, connection and when I get to wiring up to the acorn I'll go over this a little bit more carefully so normally closed means when everything is okay everything's happy all everything's normally closed that way if the drive loses power something goes bad it, it opens up it breaks the circuit the centroid acorn knows something went bad so you need to make sure your drives are set up for normally closed um, alarm status so when everything's good it's normally closed now the way you do that in order to do that you have to use the software the drive configuration software and in one of my other videos i have i talk about this i have a hyperlink i have the files in a dropbox location uh, long story short there's there's two versions of the program there's the chinese version and there's the english version First you install the Chinese version, then you install the English version. If you don't install the Chinese version, the English version won't work. I don't know why it's like that, but that's what I've discovered trial and error. So install the Chinese version, then the English version. Then you're gonna need one of these adapters, these USB adapters uh, to go from USB to serial port. I talk about those in one of my videos. And then finally, you're going to need this programming cable that fast to buy sells. It's like $15 and uh, looks like a telephone cable, very simple. And what you do is you just come over here and if I can do this while I'm holding the phone, you just plug in and then you come over here to your drive software and you hit the little thing here. Now for my adapter, my USB serial adapter, I go to COM5 and you say open. Now you've opened a connection to that drive. Then you come here to parameters and you say read drive. And then you'll get all the drive parameters. Um, I don't think you can really change any settings on the screen, but you get to view them, save them, download them, whatever. So the one that I have to change is under I.O. And what it is is fault output. So fault output will, def when you, every drive I've bought, it defaults to active low. You need to change it to active high and then say, okay. And then what happens when you come back here, let's say read drive just to give you the idea here. After you make that setting, you're not done. Even though it looks like it wrote something to the drive, you're not done. Your settings will really not be sent to the drive and stored permanently until you say download to drive. When you click on download to drive, it'll say, are you sure you wanna write these settings to the drive? You can say yes. And then all your new settings will, be, will actually be stored and locked into the drive. Um, so like I said, for fault output, I set it to act, active high, and that seems to work the best for me when I'm wiring up my uh, alarm circuit to the centroid acorn board.
Okay. Very good. We'll stop right there. Uh, thanks for watching. And the next video, I guess we'll get into hooking some things up to the acorn.